Now let us see the animated demonstration of dropped arm test. Now you can see an animated patient here. What is the position of the patient? With the patient in upright position, now the examiner or a doctor passively moves the patient's arm to 90 degrees of abduction. Then the patient is asked to slowly lower the arm to the normal anatomical position. Now the test is considered to be positive if the patient is unable to perform the action due to the pain or if the arm just dropped to the side. And now what are the conditions associated with the positive results? Mainly because of rotator cuff muscle injury, especially supraspinatus muscle or the conditions which are associated with maybe some acromial impingement, neurogenic weakness, suprascapular nerve palsy, injury to the axillary nerve or C5 radiculopathy. All these are the conditions which may be associated with the positivity of the dropped arm test. Now let us concentrate on the mechanism behind this. We know about the abduction of the arm. Abduction of the arm from 0 to 90 degrees is dependent upon the supraspinatus and the deltoid muscles. This is what we have studied in our anatomy classes. And now, to explain more precisely, the supraspinatus is responsible for the first 15 degrees of the abduction and the deltoid muscle is responsible for the movement that is abduction beyond 15 degrees that is 15 degrees to 90 degrees. Therefore, if there is a rotator cuff tear, example, if there is a tear in the supraspinatus muscle or subacromial impingement, if it is present, the ability of the arm to maintain abduction is impaired. So, when the test is positive, it is significantly increases the probability of the rotator cuff muscle tear, especially you have to suspect that tear may be the supraspinatus muscle or subacromial impingement. And the negative test does not reliably exclude the diagnosis. This is also all of you have to remember the point. So, this is what we need to know what exactly is about dropped arm test.